Shalom, Shalom, Israel. Glory to the King. Greetings to all saints that be scattered abroad throughout the dysphoria. Uh, the love of Yah. I am your host this evening, Elder Donnie. Uh, send peace and blessings to you all. And welcome to the Straightway Truth radio broadcast here on Blog Talk Radio. Hallelujah. Thank you, saints, for that uh, the audio check. I see we're coming in good. Before we... Um, I want to give all praise and honor to the Most High Yah, first and foremost. Hallelujah. We give Yahweh all the praise. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy, truly is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Um, uh, all honor to our pastor, our beloved shepherd, Pastor Charles Dowell. Hallelujah. And all the pastors associated with Straightway Truth. Uh, blessings and peace to you all. And all of the elders uh, in Israel. Uh, not to uh, forget Teacher Shane. Teacher Shane McKnight, blessings to you. And um, it's just an honor, Israel, to be here with you yet once again. Glory to the King. I pray uh, that that you all are, are doing well out there and that you all are encouraged on this uh, first day of the week. Um, as we come to the close of the first day of the week, um, um, I, I tell you what, these days are definitely flying by us, uh, saints of the Most High. You know, when I look up, you know, it's a whole nother week, and, and we're at it again. But um, I tell you what, we, we need to take advantage of the time that we have. And, um, you know, just, just as Pastor always, you know, tells us to live every day as if it were your last and, and make the most of it, you know. Because, um, man, this time is flying by, and it's not waiting for no one. So we better get it, and we better get this thing together, and we better get it. On the go. Hallelujah. So just got a, a couple of announcements before we get started, saints. Um, I'm going to change the format of this particular broadcast just a little bit. Uh, I won't do phone calls anymore on this broadcast, but I'll continue, you know, um, just speaking to you. Uh, whatever information I have, whatever's on my heart, I'll speak to you about that and um, whatever else I have. Um, but I won't do phone calls. We'll just pretty much just talk to you. You know, as I'm led uh, to do so. Also, Saints, I want you to, uh, if ever there's a situation where the, uh, let's see, where the, um, where we lose audio, uh, most of the times, you know, you can, uh, you'll be able to tell me. You'll pick up on it before I do. Um, if you're there in the chat room, if you notice that the sound goes out, just as you've been doing, uh, you know, put zeros up. Let me know no sound or some some type of indication that you know it's not coming through. There's different um, avenues in which uh, Blog Talk Radio has chosen to use. However, uh, they just added the Skype button um, option back up, so that's what I'm using today. So I just wanted to let you know if uh, we do lose audio, just give me a few minutes and I'll divert to the old. Uh, I mean, the second uh, option or, or backup plan that uh, we have set up. So uh, I appreciate your cooperation with that, Saints. But I um, just wanted to get that out of the way before we get started here. And um, I'll tell you what, Saints, we are a blessed people. Yes, we are the chosen, the elect of Yahweh. And that's how you need to view and, and look at yourselves uh, as being. So you have a little bit more respect for the Father you have a little bit more respect for his laws. You have a little bit more respect for yourself, realizing who you are. You are Yisrael, Yahweh's chosen, hallelujah, a peculiar people. We are different than those of the world, hallelujah, and it needs to be known. And uh, our lifestyles should be an example of such. But uh, yes, uh, Israel, we are a blessed people. Um I tell you what, just just from um, you know the message on yesterday, it was one of those messages that really commanded the attention, your attention, your undivided attention, and um, it was one of those that really made us think, or it should have made you think. You know, it made me think real hard and deep, and 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 and, and really to consider the words that were uh, said. Hallelujah. Having said that, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read something to you real quickly. 
All right. And this is Romans chapter 13, starting at verse 11 through 14. And it says, And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and in wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on Yahweh, put on the Master Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof meaning the desires and uh, the different uh, forbidden desires and, 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 and pleasures and things of that nature don't put on that stuff and don't make provisions for it you know saints we really need to realize and, and, and with times that we're in and uh, take that into account it's obvious because of what's going on around us, we can see uh, how 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 evil uh, uh, the days are and, and and the people are. We can see that, but just the fact that you know the Father has chosen to you know restore back unto us, you know His laws uh, by placing them on our hearts, uh, we can see where we come from. You know, many of us just a few years ago, and we can see the change in our lives. We know that Yah is doing something, and something is going on. Whether we understand it or not fully, but we know something is happening. All right? And we need to be aware of that and be mindful of that, uh, saying to the Most High. This is not church. This is not an organization. This is not um, something that you are a part of, to say that you are a part of it, to be in the in crowd. This is not one of those uh, things. This is a, a lifestyle. This is the faith. This is the way. Hallelujah. So um, be mindful of that. But, saints, you know. Just hear me out. You know, we need to be, all of us do, at a high level of soberness and attentiveness, especially during Sabbath services, when the message is going forth out of the mouth of the man of Yah. We need to really pay close attention and listen to what the words that are being said. You know, I tried my best. On um, last broadcast, you know, at the end of the broadcast, I uh, in in an attempt to do what I call the heart to heart, just to really uh, speak to the, the hearts of Israel, and even the more so, just to continue in that thought and, and, and in that sentiment, we need to really pay attention and, and focus. You know, on what on, on what's been said. You know, Pastor mentioned something on yesterday that really stood out to me, and um, he said, he said, you know, we are we are we are getting ready for a time where um, it's going to be much. I can't quote it exactly, but it, it basically he was saying it's going to be a time of much. Uh, um, how did he say? He said a lot of peril. A perilous times, excuse me, saints, that are ahead of us. And so we need to prepare now for those perilous times that are ahead. All right? And so it's, it's little things like that that, that stand out to me that uh, I really, um, that it just grabbed my attention. I mean, not that I wasn't paying attention, but it really made me uh, really think on that. You know, um, a time in which, you know, we've never seen before, you know. Um, but, but overall, we just need to get ourselves ready, uh, saints of the Most High. Um, we really do. Um, let's see what else. Um, you 
you know, just through observation and discernment, you know, I've noticed that as we see the morale, the moral condition in our in our world, it plummet. Um, I also noticed that, you know, the messages that, that are coming forth from the pulpit, um, they're more centered around obedience, uh, sanctification, and holiness. You know, now even more than ever, you know, um, and especially as of lately, uh, you know, these messages of sanctification, I mean, they have really truly been hitting home and, I mean, really causing us to really um, dig deep and search, search our hearts. To, to purify and, and get rid of all um, uncleanness, all filth, all garbage, you know, all of the things that are not of Yah. And so we need to really take heed to that as well, uh, saying to the Most High, because it's really, you know, and, and I even remember Pastor saying that some of the stuff, it was his first time even hearing it uh, as he preached it, you know. I mean, and, and, and that's, that's, that's something severe, you know, the Father's really dealing with uh, with us in this hour. And as I said earlier, you know, the time is just flying, flying by. So we have to get it. We have to get it. And we need to get it now. Who know who's to say that we have another twenty years to get it? Don't don't seem like it the way that things are going, but who's to say it? So we need to take heed to the moment. We need to take heed to each and every day. And take advantage of the time that we have each and every day. To spend it with the Father. To draw nigh unto him, you know, through his word, through prayer, you know, through fasting. These are the things that we need to consume ourselves with. Glory to the king. <clears throat> but you know what? I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it just from my own experience. We, we really don't know what persecution is, uh, saints. We really don't. You know, we read about it, you know, what our ancients went through uh, of those before us, you know, some of their struggles just to, to, to keep the faith. And, you know, we read it, you know, we try our hardest to, to comprehend it, put ourselves in that situation. You know, but the fact is, a lot of us, many of us, we have never dealt with that type. Of, uh, of that type of persecution. You know, it was an instance where the apostles, I mean, they fled. They had to go to different regions and different areas in order, you know, just, you know, because the, the persecution was so great. I mean, many died. I mean, and there was an instance in, you know, in the book of Maccabees, there were some that, that died. And Pastor mentioned this on, even on yesterday, where whereas they didn't even fight back. They just died. You know, they just they didn't fight, but they lost their lives. You know, do we think about this uh, and seriously consider our lives and what it's like to have it threatened? You know, as long as things are going well and, and, and we're free, we have the freedom to do as we please, uh, especially to worship the Father and to praise Him. You know, a lot of, we don't, we don't, quite get it. We don't quite, uh, re you know, res relate to, 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 to persecution, if I will. What I'll do is I'll try to use, you know, because as I was meditating on it and trying to really grasp it, because I try to, you know, really deal with myself on these issues. And I was thinking about it and I, I thought about, well, it reminded me of uh, a few uh, a few situations that I, I found myself in as a, as a child or as a teenager. Growing up in the inner city, all right, and and during this time, what I'm speaking of is when, you know, it was it was real bad on the streets. You know, drugs were were really bad, um, and it was almost like a war going on all around me. And I found myself the very first time this ever happened to me. Um, this is what, what I'm speaking of is having the feeling of, of of your life being threatened or you being in a situation where. You know, it's, you know, I mean, your your nerves are just all out of whack. Your your adrenaline is pumping. Your fear sets in. That's the only thing I can equate this to. 
But I was in a situation of a shootout. Just going on along about my business. I think I was headed to the corner store myself and, and, and a few of my cousins. And, you know, all of a sudden we had just made it to the store right outside the store. And and, and before we could touch the doorknob, we hear, uh, the, the it sounded like a, you know, rapid fire. And it was loud. And we could actually hear the, uh, you know, the bullets ricocheting off of the uh, little metal pieces on the building. Something like you would hear in a movie, you know, pew, 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 pew. and I'm talking about we we teenagers and, and 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 younger, younger than that. And so we found ourselves in the middle of a shootout. I mean, can you imagine the type of terror that brought upon us as children? The very first time this ever happened. Now we didn't, you know, saw uh, um, scenes like this in movies and stuff, but never in real life. When you actually hear a gun, a loud gun, a big gun that close and you hear you know the, the bullets um, whisking above your head and flying above your head and hitting uh, bricks and metals you know it, it, it's terrifying I mean it is absolutely terrifying and so that's you know I put myself in that um, mode and in that line of thinking thinking in order to, 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 to comprehend you know what would happen if my life was in danger you know, uh, uh, as a result of persecution, of being persecuted in in in, in any way, really. Um, and and it brought me back to that. But I tell you what, that was a very terrifying experience. But that didn't happen once. It happened uh, a few times when I found myself in that situation. You know, and you can never really get yourself prepared for that. You can never really be used to something like that or accustomed to it. N neither do you want to be. Because it just goes against, you know, um, um, it's just not natural for for a person to, you know, to, to deal with that, especially not a child. And so, as it, it pertains to this faith, you know, saints, um, what if we found ourselves on a constant basis having to fear, not fear, but have, you know, having to have to feel like that or having to defend ourselves? defend what we believe in, you know. Pastor brought that out on yesterday and talked about, you know, um, about us. Are we really willing to die? Are we, are we really, is it settled in our hearts, you know? And so that's something we really got to ask ourselves. It, it, every situation may not be uh, that type of situation, but what I'm trying to convey is the the whole, I guess, out-of-body experience or when you are outside of that comfort zone, then what? Then what do you do? Because, see, then I was, you know, I wasn't in the faith. I wasn't filled with the baptism of the, of the Holy Spirit. I wasn't filled with the Ruach, you know. But this is a different ball game now. And so, you know, saints, we need to consider that and, and, and really um, try to be mindful of it. You know, we have many examples in the Word. Of of, uh, of our ancients and 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 what what they did in those situations and so you know we got to start preparing our minds now you know for uh, whatever may come along down the pipe hallelujah um let's see but as I move on saints you know I've heard and I'm sure you have as well. I've heard people speaking, um, you know, against the return of Messiah. Um, you know, you hear, I, I've heard foolish foolish people speak, you know, because of, you know, uh, Messiah, uh, they, you know, we we are anticipating his return. But, you know, there, there are many that's thinking, well, hey, how do we know it's going to happen now? You know, how do we know... Um, It'll even happen in our lifetime, or, or, or we've been waiting for so long, and, you know, people give up hope. You know, people show what they believe in by their actions, and that's a clear example. We see the way that the world is going now. We see all of, uh, I mean, just the, just the, it's outright just wickedness, and it's, it's, it's blast, blasphemous in the face of, uh, of the Father. You know, we, we can tell that there's not many out in the world at all that believe that the Messiah is coming. Not at all. Neither do they want to. And because they don't, 
believe, then they have no idea what's actually going to take place at his coming. Um, you know, for example, look at the, 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 the hideous acts and the disrespectful acts you know, of, of people. You know, I was reading that, that there was a, a group of homosexuals, right? They uh, ripped, ripped the pages of the Bible and, and they wiped their butts with it and balled them up and threw them at people, at parents, actually, who were protesting. It was this new uh, pro-homosexual uh, sexual diversity curriculum that was supposed to be implemented in these schools, and this was in Germany. And these uh, parents were against it. And so as they protest, this is what the type of behavior that uh, these gays and, you know, these homosexuals display. It's, they rip pages from the Bible, wipe their butts with it, and threw it at the people. Just outright, just no respect at all whatsoever. No respect for Yah, no respect for themselves or nothing. You see, this is what we're dealing with, a, a type of people that have no regard and no respect. Um, and recently, Pastor Dow did a video uh, just to, just today, you know, of this this gay man who proposed to his, his so called lover in this AME church, you know, and 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 the response of the entire congregation was that of an applaud, you know, and it, it's so sad, we, you know, we the times that we live in, it, and I even said it when I saw it, I said, man, when you think it can't get any worse, so can you only imagine? Can you only imagine what's ahead if we see um, this type of uh, uh, behavior, you know, from 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 the heathen? I mean, what else? We can see that there's no respect, and so they they'll cross any line. They they you know they don't value our laws, and that's obvious. Um, and they're making it clear that they don't. And so this is what we're up against. Um, so we definitely are at war. Hallelujah. Um, you know, Christianity, that's just a buffer. That's just a smoke screen. You know, they, they you know, the Hasatan is really after the seed. I mean, let's just be real, you know. And you're not blind. You can see all that's going on in this world. Um, it's getting worse and worse. You know, the people are just more vile. They're becoming more vile. You know, a sinful people. Very, very sinful. Very arrogant. And, um, you know, saints, I don't know about you, but this stuff, it really vexes my spirit. Uh, it does. And I'm not I'm not even around it all the time like that, but just to hear about it. And, you know, it, it makes you wonder, man, is this really going on, man? And then when you see the video footage of it and you see, yes, yeah, these things are really happening. So I tell you, man, this is a bad place to be. And saints, you don't want to be caught in those population centers. You want to be getting out of there and making moves to get out of there. Hallelujah. So, um, but you can tell we live in a world where shoot, hardly anyone believes um, in the coming of the Messiah. And um, and since they don't believe, then as I said earlier, then they're not aware, you know, of the destruction that is ahead. And, uh, and that that day will come and it'll be a shock to them and it'll be unpleasant. That's right. <laughs> but I would say that would have never happened in history. We're not at all. They would have even... Uh, Nah, they won't try that. But you gotta watch them, though. Uh, you know, saints. You know, they got they got some that they might try to get bold. You know, they might try to come. Um, you gotta just watch, though. Um, those that might try to prove a point. Um. But you know, not for not for us, Israel. You know, we we are being warned. We're given um, space and time. You know, to repent. Um, we are watching. And um, we have a, a shepherd, you know, who, who's constantly watching and constantly um, looking out for the sheep. And um, and another thing, too, saints, uh, just be mindful of this, too. You know, I, and I, I try to make a habit of doing this and praying for those, you know, those who are lost, who are still stuck out in bondage, those who um, y'all are. Uh, they really has chosen, but they just haven't come out just yet, or for whatever reason, you know. You know, we were at one time in bondage. You know, uh, we were, we thought we were right, 
And um, but you know the father started dealing with us, dealing with our hearts. You know, and uh, I just I just try to make a, a habit of, of praying, praying for those who are still in there that they come out that the the uh, chains be loosed. You know, from them, and that that they come up out of bondage, that they come up out of darkness. You know, it's a time of of transition that takes place. You know what I mean? And and just pray for the you know that transition that they come up out of that. And um, because you know we all needed some type of comfort. We all needed you know someone to to help us out to get us out of it. Um, someone there to comfort us. You know, I remember once it was on a a, a Saturday night. And uh, I had just finished talking to my entire family. And, I mean, you're talking about somebody that was beat down. I mean, just I was just wore out from all of the, the fighting and warring. And what I did was that night I, I clicked on, uh, went online and got on to Straightway Truth's blog talk. And Pastor Dow was actually speaking to someone. I guess it had, uh, it was a, a rebroad, you know, it was on demand from the night before. And so uh, somebody called in and he had just had the similar, uh, same issue, pretty much the same thing, almost word for word. But anyway, I listened to that, and that was comforting to my soul. You know, um, after, you know, coming out of that, it, it was rough, you know, and, and trying to come out of uh, darkness. So what I'm saying is just be mindful of that when you pray, and, and if you do know of someone who's just coming out, try to be there for them and, and comfort them in, in whatever way possible because it, it really makes a difference. Hallelujah. So, glory to the King. But moving on, say, um, I'm going to go to uh, Second Peter, and uh, I'll read from there, because, um, you know, as I was mentioning, there's many that, you know, they don't really, they don't really believe Messiah's coming, but it, it will be a day of reckoning, all right? It will not be pretty. Second Peter chapter 3, I'm going to start at uh, verse 1, and it says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Master and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, mockers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Talking about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And it says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant. They are ignorant of. That by the word of Yahweh, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. That's talking about when, the, you know, the time of the great flood and how, you know, the, the, the evil of man was just, I mean, the thoughts of man was just evil, just continually. And and the result of it was uh, um, the flood that, that wiped away all the wickedness. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So uh, just as before, these ungodly men, they were destroyed. Same is coming this time, but it's not going to be by water. Um, we know it's going to be by fire, and it's going to be, it's going to be uh, very, very, um, uh, very violent and, and destruction uh, all over the place. Uh, verse 8 says, but beloved, be not ignorant. You see, this is speaking to you, the beloved. Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years 
as one day. Yahweh is not slack. Listen to this. He's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. All right? But is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, you know what? The hell with all of those who uh, count his, 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 um, um, from them being away for, you know, for Yahweh giving us space to repent. It, it's for us. The hell with them. But it's for uh, for us, Israel. Um, we're given this space and, and this time of grace in order to uh, get ourselves right, to get ourselves ready and prepared for uh, uh, Messiah's coming. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, and, and you know it as well, but look at the messages that have been going coming, you know, uh, forward um, from the pulpit, really, really um, charging us to really um, put off that old man, put off all you know the works of darkness, um, to really, really sanctify ourselves. And so it's for you. This time frame, it is for you. And it might seem, you know, and I said, I said it, you know, and I keep saying it. But the time is flying, and we don't have time to to to, uh, um, to allow any of this stuff to to slip by us, you know, to forget it or or to downplay it as if it is nothing. This time is for us, saints, Israel. Let's get it together. Let's get ourselves right with the Father by all means, whatever it takes um, to 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 get it done. Hallelujah. And I'm going to continue on in verse um, 10. It says, But the day of Yahweh, listen to this, the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Here's a question, sir. What manner of persons ought ye to be in our holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hallelujah. So the question is, you know, what manner of persons aren't you to be? Seeing that you know, you know, you can see the signs of the time. You see all that's that's uh, that's happening, and even worse things are to come. And even then, more than that, you know, you know what the outcome will be. It says, "Whereby, where the world that then was." I'm sorry. It says that the elements shall melt. With fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. I mean, that should be enough right there to get you get you going. A lot of fire under you. Do you want to be a partaker in all of that? Do you want to be, um, you know, destroyed with the wicked? See, you hearing the word, you you you're getting this. You you hear the teachings, you hear the instructions. You getting it. So if you decide to, you know, after all of that, to still live, live a life of sin, to be disobedient to the commandments, then you know what's coming. So the question is, what manner of person are you to be? How should you live? You should not be living after the former man, after the old man, according to the flesh. Being fearful, 
you know, lack of faith, you know, enjoying your life. It's not about you. You know, Pastor mentioned this before, and he said that, you know, the, the, the those that came before us, you know, a lot of them were selfish. You know, I was thinking on that, and I thought about it. You know, really they were selfish. You know, there were not many to teach us. There were not those there with wisdom, you know, with the knowledge. You know, there were many people that came along that, that maybe uh, raised us. You know, all they could give us is old sayings and old, you know, cliches and old wise tales and things. But they, it was never really according to knowledge. So a lot of us, we just grew up, you know, in the wrong way, getting wrong teachings, just um, believing any and everything, you know, that was uh, that was spoken to us or taught to us. But if you think about our ancients. Were they really concerned about the generations that were to come behind them? You know, were they really worried about us? You know, it seems as a, a selfish people because they took it upon themselves to go a whoring after other gods when, you know, when they were instructed not to. I'm not coming down on them, but I'm just saying, just look at it. It was a selfish act. We don't have the luxury of being selfish. We cannot be selfish thinking about ourselves. We give up ourselves. We give up our lives in order to serve the Father. You know, there there, there are children that are coming into this, uh, um, who are coming in, who are birthed into this, this walk, who are, uh, are being converted into this thing. Whoever considers them so I'm going to tell you this, saints, we um, who, 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 who have the record before us, um, who are in this time now, we better stay focused. We better get out of self. You know, it's not about us individually. We lose all of that when we come this way. It's all about serving our Father, doing His will. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on here in Second uh, Peter. I'm going to go there to um, verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our master is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be comprehended, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Verse 17 says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, ye know these things before, ye I'm sorry, excuse me. It says, He therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. And here's the thing it says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be both now, I'm sorry, to him be glory both now and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So I um, thought that would be um, fitting for us um, just, just, to, uh, just to put that on your minds and on your hearts. Um, let me, let's just be real. We, we are, we here, we in this flesh, we are human. I mean, there's temptation that, that comes, you know, 
you know, there's um, a lethargic spirit. There's um, uh, that apathetic spirit, you know, that, that, that enters in. Lack of faith that enters in. Um, and just all, all this wickedness that's around us. So the 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 uh the encouragement here is just to just to stay steadfast, you know. Stay uh hungry in this thing. Continue to fight and battle and war for your soul, for your soul's sake. Hallelujah. So um also from there I'm gonna go over to uh I'll go to Jude. Saints. All right, and start at verse eighteen. Hallelujah. And it says, How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. And you see, it says, Those who walk after their own ungodly, uh, ungodly lust. There it is again, those who want to do their own thing. Selfish. And it says, um, these be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the spirit. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of Yah, looking for the mercy of of our master Jesus Christ unto eternal life and of some having compassion making a difference and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, um, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. All right, I'm going to go from that, saints. One more. And uh, let's see. Let's go to Luke. Book of Luke 21. All right. 21, I'm going to start at verse 26. All right. And it says, this is Messiah speaking here. It says, men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So it's going to be a terrifying time. This is talking about the coming of, of Messiah. So men's hearts are going to fail them because of, all, because of fear, because of all that's uh, going to be taking place here on this earth. Verse 27 says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head. For your redemption draw it nigh. And he spake to them a parable. And he said, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of Yah is at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But listen to this. The word, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surf surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. 
And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. So, glory to the King. I know I used to pray that uh, even when I was young. Um, I was maybe about 17, 18, I read that. And I noticed that at the time, you know, a lot of craziness was going on around me. And I felt like, hey, man, this has got to be the end right now. I used to pray that, that I could escape um, all that the, all that, that was uh, to come. Because I knew it was getting worse, even the more so. But it's saying that we should even pray that. And should pray it all the time. Hallelujah, saints. Glory to the King. Saints, I'm going to take a break real quick, ministry break, and then I'll be right back with you. Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, Your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. West, PMB, number one, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there. And be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives, so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. All right, saints. Glory to the King. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right. It looks it looks like this uh this particular um Skype here in which the audio is streaming from is is coming through pretty good this uh evening. So glory to the King for that. Hallelujah. All right, saints. But but nonetheless, saints, I just want to encourage your hearts on this evening. Um just to uh, you know, um, just stay steadfast and um, stay encouraged in this way. And, um, you know, we realize and we know, you know, that that Messiah is to come. All right. And our lives, are they should uh, reflect that. And, 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 you know, we need to keep that in the forefront of our minds. All right. And, and um, not get sidetracked, let us stray. Um, because let's face it, we're, this is not our home. I mean, we're just here. You know, occupying until um till until until the king comes. And so we want to be found ready and prepared when he does come. You know, so you know that's that's just pretty much what the, the the this this talk was about this evening. Um I wanted to also say this here, you know, just to recap what Pastor said on yesterday, you know, you make sure that, that there's no anti uh Messiah spirit you know working in your heart you know constantly constantly week after week you know it's been spoken to you um, by the elders by a pastor by the teacher you know to work on your heart because that's where it all starts and that's where the battle is it's in the mind 
the mind and the heart. So it's um and they're one and the same. But get get that through your mind. Um, all right, saints. Um, settle it in your hearts. You know. You know, Pastor also said that you know our fate will be tested, and um, it, it truly will be. You know, he said, you know, this is we're all boasting, and in this boast, it's gonna be tested. You know. There's no more time for a game. There's no more time to, you know, be nonchalant and thinking all oh, whatever, you know. This is real. This is the real deal. Uh, this walk that we're in, you know, this is not pretend. And so in, in, in treating it as such, it should bring about a greater level of uh, respect and honor, uh, soberness, and we should really be uh, striving, you know, to enter in. Pressing hard toward the mark, and so uh, let's keep that in, 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 our, in our, the forefront of our, of our minds, you know. Because at the end of the day, we are looking for the kingdom. That's what we're seeking, where there's righteousness ruling. Um, I don't know about you, saints, but y'all, I, I, I'm sick and tired of uh, the, the 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 wickedness. I'm sick and tired of the unjust system that we're in. Sick and tired of the lies, you know, and so I'm yearning for something better, and I know that there is something better. And uh, just wait patiently for our for our King, and we shall receive a reward. Hallelujah! We faint not, but uh, we got to make it our business too to to hide this word in our hearts, you know, on a daily basis, on a constant basis. Just as we ought to pray without ceasing, this word should be without ceasing. As far as us eating and, and, and feasting on it. Hallelujah. You know, because it's, um, you know, a lot of times we really forget where we come from. You know, the struggle that we were in and the, the darkness that we were in. Uh, I hear Pastor mention this many times that, you know, we try and we take a lot of garbage from our, our, our past and bring it into this walk, which is not good. You know, we can't do the same things in which we did before. Uh, you know, we, we really can't do those things, but uh, all praise to the Father, all glory and honor to His holy name. Um, thank Him. What I'm going to do is say something. I'm going to read uh, I'll just give some tips real quick. Uh, deliverance tips real quick, and it's just basic tips. Just want to keep you uh, encouraged in that area as well, because we have to continue this fight, continue to, to uh, war against Satan's kingdom. Um, that's a constant battle, and that that uh, goes without saying as well. But we, we need to really uh, fight against the, the the enemy. You know, we have too much knowledge before us um, not to be doing anything about it, not to be opposing Satan's kingdom. Hallelujah. And I'm going to just read this real quickly to you. And this is uh, real basic stuff, but just to put it back on your minds and your hearts. But uh, basic steps of deliverance. And one is this. Identify the problem. Whatever area it is that you're suffering from or you're tempted or tormented or being driven. Identify what it is. Uh, another step to that is this. To forgive. Pray and get yourself right with the Most High. All right. That's key. And a lot of times you see um, new people come around. They want, oh, I want to be, I want, I want free. I want to be delivered. I want deliverance. But you know, the question is, have you spent time with the Father? Have you really uh, asked for forgiveness and and really sincerely meant it? So that's uh, the next step. Also, I think it's key and it's, it's critical and it's breaking the curses and soul ties on you as well as your descendants. Um, as well as, you know, generational curses and things. Another um, step is to, to cast out, go ahead and cast out the demons. Once you take them, all of the above have been taken place, then you cast them out of the demons in the name of Jesus. Next you pray uh, for healing for your body and your soul. And following this, the most important uh, part of it all is discipline in your life. By changing the ways, by, by walking in your deliverance and uh, not returning back into the old vomit 
and those old ways and the old thinking and acting. So walk in the newness of life. All right. One more thing on uh, the, the 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 spiritual warfare tip is this. Um, remember the um, that rejection, root of bitterness, rebellion, and unforgiveness. These are all areas in which um, demons. Uh, these are the root causes of most of the problems in uh, saints. All right, we must work to cleanse out our lives of all rejection, bitterness, and rebellion, so that we are not controlled in any way by these emotions and reactions. Unforgiveness is very detrimental to our lives, and we must forgive everyone who has done anything to us. Actual or imagined. Hate, vengeance, envy, and strife have no part in our lives. You must deal with why you con uh, consciously do things that are displeasing to Yah. You must deal with why you do things subconsciously without active thought on your part. You must check every area of your life that does not glorify the Father. Furthermore, the kingdom of Yah, uh, the Holy Spirit within you, excuse me, it says, whatever doesn't uh, line up with the glory of Yah and further the kingdom of Yah, please the Holy Spirit within you, line up with the Bible and make good sense. Your mind will be slowly restored as you follow uh, those steps. Hallelujah. Right. One other thing I wanted to do, saints, uh, is to, uh, this section I'll call it, you know, like words of wisdom, all right? Uh, before I was playing uh, just a clip, that an audio clip, and uh, from time to time I may just, just find some uh, verses that are, are encouraging and that uh, provide, you know, with some uh, comprehension or, or, or wisdom and just words of wisdom. And I'll read those to you, saints, and um, bid you farewell. On this uh, evening, all right. I got a couple of them here, so just bear with me. First one here is from Proverbs four and seven, and it says, "Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding." Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, eighteen eighteen to through twenty. It says, "The fear of Yahweh is the first step to be accepted of Him." And wisdom obtaineth his love. The knowledge of the commandments of Yahweh is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. And verse 20 says, The fear of Yahweh is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. And the knowledge of his omnipotency. Psalms 119.34 It says, Give me comprehension, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Psalms 119.104 It says, Through thy precepts I get comprehension. Therefore, I hate every false way. Ecclesiasticus, Sirach again, 1824. He that hath small comprehension and feareth Yah is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. Same... Um, Book here, Ecclesiasticus, eighteen twenty nine, and it says, "A man may be known by his look, and one that hath comprehension by his countenance, when thou meetest him." Second Ezra eight and four. So answered I, and said, "Swallow them down, O my soul, comprehension." 
and devour wisdom. The last one here is uh, Ecclesiastes 21 and 11, and it says, He that keepeth the law of Yahweh, get it comprehension thereof, and the perfection of the fear of Yahweh is wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to the King, saints. Bless y'all. Saints of the Most High, I pray that y'all uh, just stay encouraged throughout the uh, the week. Go back over the Sabbat message, Sabbath message. Really take heed to, you know, uh, what was said. And and really um, get it in your heart, settle it in your heart. And do what you have to do. Uh, meditate on it. And um, so we can get ready for what's what's coming ahead. And the way we can get ready, too, is really staying close to the Father. Staying in the love of Yah. And um, so that we can be protected. Because um, we need them. We cannot do nothing on our own. Um, we cannot run this race alone. We can't do it without each other, which is very uh, crucial. Um, another thing that's been brought forth a lot too lately is just the unity and the toge togetherness and being uh, on one accord, being as one. We need it so much, so much more now than ever before. As we're going to really need to depend on one another. Uh, we're going to need each other. Hallelujah. Having that tribal mentality. We need to learn what that's all about. Glory to the King. Um, saints, I just pray that y'all are encouraged. Continue to pray one for another. Um, and um, just stay in a fight. Stay hungry. Stay steadfast. Stay, stay encouraged in this thing. And encourage one another. Um, I'm um, Elder Donnie here signing off. For this edition of uh, the Straightway Truth on Blog Talk Radio, um, y'all be at peace, saints. Bless you all and love you all, and I'll uh, see you soon. Shalom, shalom.